Welcome back. It's 8.49. You're watching and listen to Breakfast with Anne and Martin. Yeah, joining us to go through some of the day's headlines now, GB News' senior political commentator Nigel Nelson and uh, former Conservative advisor Claire Pearsall. And it's lovely to see you both again. You um, right, Nigel, the NHS has got to modernise or die. Who yeah. said it? Uh, this is Wes Treating, mm. the Shadow uh, um, Health Secretary, who will probably very soon be the Health Secretary. Uh, what he wants to do is double the number of scanners in hospitals. His point is that... Um, at the moment that the lifespan of a, of a scanner, MRI or CT, are, is 10 years, mm -hmm. um, and one in five hospitals hasn't had a replacement since the last time Labour were in government. No. So, yeah, about half, the, half, the, half of these scanners are out of, out of time. And, of course, moment. what he's saying is he's a walking case... For he says exactly needing that. Needing early right. diagnosis. Yes. yes. Mm. That, that, that had his kidney cancer not been caught early, he, he, he may might not be, be around. He may not, might not be around mm. today. So um, obviously, it's a way of getting waiting lists down, paid for by the non uh, by uh, abolishing non dom status. He reckons he get 170 okay. million pounds out of that. Um, I mean, no one's going to say this is a bad idea. As long as you can afford it, it's good. Well, we could say, though, Claire, that this is, this is fiddling at the edges. We could say that a few scanners isn't the issue. We could say, um, to visiting Tony Blair's old mantra, it's time to looking at least part privatisation of the NHS. Will the Labour Party grasp that nettle? I think they're going to be very, very uncomfortable to do so. Um, and I don't... I mean, this isn't a bad thing, looking at scanners, uh, but you're right, it is sort of fiddling around the edges. And what makes me laugh is this use of the non-DOM status tax raid, which I think Labour have spent two or three times over, at the very least. Um, they're, pl they're pledging to spend £171 million a year over the next Parliament. That's a lot of money to raise out yeah. of one tax, which they've used somewhere else as well. So, yes, I think they have to face up to the fact that they might have to privatise some. And don't people that get taxed heavily just move away from the country? They do. They'll take their money away with them. Mm. So it's not a never-ending pot. Mm. OK, yeah, another story that's caught our attention here. Dale Vince. Ah. Of course, Dale Vince, of course, the founder of the Ecotricity over in Stroud there. Um, he's been criticised in the past for donating one and a half million quid to the Labour Party. Now he said the pot is dry. Why? Well, it's not necessarily the pot is dry for Labour, but I think it is the pot is dry for Just Stop Oil. Mm. Now, he is free, obviously, to donate to the political party of his choosing. And what he's going to do now is that because the link with the Labour Party and Just Stop Oil has been picked up by the Conservative Party, and quite rightly so, mm. and been used as an issue, he feels that it, it is a distraction. He is now not going to fund Just Stop Oil, but is looking to, to put his efforts into Just Vote which is a group, a, a platform, a campaign group to encourage younger people to vote. Now, we've, we saw from your package earlier that I think young people are actually more engaged now than they ever have been. And my concern is because he is a Labour supporter and a Labour donor, any institution campaign group that he sets up is going to have a political bias. Mm. So, so just vote means just vote Labour? Uh, that's what I take it to mean, yeah. <laughs> I, and I'm just thinking about that. But it's a bit from a <laughs> Basically. Um, Nigel, uh, how much of an issue is this kind of link to Just Stop Oil going to be for Keir Starmer? He shares their, their stance on North Sea Oil. He wants to just stop North Sea Oil, despite the fact we could become more energy sovereign. Is this net zero wedge issue we've now seen opened up with Rishi going to become an issue for the Labour Party? Or do you think they'll stand firm and say, no, the future is renewables? Well, I think that, that he will stand firm and say the future is re renewables. I mean, he, he's also gone back on a few things. That the idea was to spend £28 billion um, on making Britain green. He was talking about a new company, state-owned company, Great British Energy. All those things are now seemingly put back. I mean, he can't borrow the money because interest rates are so high, so you can understand it. Um, but, yes, I mean, he's still determined to, to go ahead and hit net zero. Mm. Uh, is that attainable, Claire? I mean, when... One of the things that there has been a bit of a bounce for Rishi on this wedge mm. issue of when it comes down to affordability, you yeah. have to get a new boiler, you have to get a new car, you're getting tax of the hilt on net zero. When it's the pounds and the pence in the pocket and not the principle of or the prospect of net zero, do you think Rishi's made the right move? 
I do, and I think that politics should be about bringing people along with you, not forcing something upon them and telling them to do it mm. and stuff the cost. Because it, it's not quite as simple as that. It's not quite as simple as, uh, well, go and buy yourself an electric car. Right, OK, they're very expensive. We don't have the grid infrastructure. We don't have the charging infrastructure. And we have seen that the battery life is not great. So until those problems are sorted out, I think it's inherently wrong to force people to change. But it is a very expensive way of doing something that people are already doing. I think that we do need to look at alternative fuel, we need to look at solar, we need to look at wind and nuclear for a start. But those all come in with planning problems. So I think that it's not wrong to look at climate change, but I think it's it's quite wrong to force that cost upon people who, who are struggling currently. Mm. Meanwhile, before we run out of time, yes. can we end on a lovely romantic note, <laughs> the latest romantic <laughs> note in the story of Akshata and Rishi Sunak? Um, Nigel, you know about this. Yes, indeed. So, he's, so the Prime Minister's revealed that he first met her where... Uh, took it, the first party he took, it, took her to when they were dating uh, was to a Halloween party and he was dressed as Harry Potter. So presumably... Do you know he, he could carry that off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like presumably after already. that he took it to a game of Quidditch. We've <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a photograph of that. I, 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 I no, would love to see a photograph of so, his Andy. I don't think so. I think... Here we go. What have we got? Look, the oh, sun. well, that's... I think that's a bit of a mock-up. I think, up, I think that that's a yeah. mock-up by the Sun newspaper or something, isn't it? <laughs> Nigel and Claire, thank you so much for joining us. Can I just say that, obviously, it's party conference season at the moment, and we're looking forward to the Labour one, which starts tomorrow, but today is the conference of the Reform UK yeah. party. And in the next hour, we're going to be joined by Nigel Farage. Now, if you've got a question you would like us to put to him, then do get in touch the usual way, gbviews at gbnews.com. What question would you like to put to Nigel Farage today? If this is your chance to barrage the Farage, we're back after this. This is GB News. <laughs>